All right, so this is for the reproductive system, and this is the second part for the female reproductive system. Uterine tubes are also called fallopian tubes, and they extend laterally from the uterus, and they carry the egg from the ovaries right here to the uterus. Um, fertilization, notice that the words in the are in the lower left, so I'm not going to write them out. Fertilization typically happens there. That means where the egg meets the sperm. The funnel-shaped free, meaning not attached to the ovary, on the lateral portion of the uterus is called the infundibulum. And at the end, the little extensions, finger-like extensions, are called the fimbrae. Normally, the fimbrae don't touch the ovaries, only during ovulation. The uterine tubes themselves are lined with three layers. And the outer layer is, out, is known as the serosa. The middle layer is the muscularis, which is, that just means it's muscle tissue. And the job is to push that egg to the uterus. And the innermost layer is of the uterine tube is, is mucosa. And this um, mucus layer is has cilia. And the job of the cilia is to move the oocyte to the uterus. That's the blank there, uterus. If there is... Um, Fertilization in that fertilized egg, so that zygote, does not make it to the uterus. What's called an ectopic pregnancy results. That's when the fertilized oocyte implants outside the uterine endometrium. And this can be uh, uh, end somebody's life. What happens is the uterus is, can expand in size to um, for the fetus, but the uterine um, tubes cannot. So if that fertilized zygote stays in that tube, it can cause extreme pain um, and hemorrhage, possibly bleeding out loss of life. And that uterine wall can even rupture. That that's actually causes the um, hemorrhaging. That's called an ectopic pregnancy. The uterus itself is lined with muscle, pear-shaped. The middle of it, the lumen, connects to the vagina inferiorly. So here's the uterus, the vagina is inferior to that. What this is saying is that it, um, usually it's, um, so, well, it is superior to the bladder. The uterus is an angled anterior, so front superiorly, just over the bladder. It can shift though um, after you've had a few kids and if you're older. The function of the uterus is to house the embryo and the fetus and to support, protect, and nourish that growing um, uh, thing. And it's also can contract to get the fetus out during birth. And the word here is contracts. <clears throat> during, if you don't get pregnant, which most of the time you don't every month, <clears throat> the uterus is designed to contract to remove that inner lining. And it also is well supplied with blood. There are different regions of the uterus, and some of their names are similar to the regions in the stomach. The top layer is, or the top region is called the fundus region. <clears throat> the, the, the bulk of it's called the body. And the most inferior region, that's your word there, inferior region is called the cervix that projects into the vagina. So beneath that is the vagina. So the cervix continued here. The cervix itself is just an extension of the uterus, the most inferior portion, we have an internal orifice and an external orifice, so this area is the cervix. So it's a channel, and at the end, um, during birth, this is what is measured for the diameter, and the cervix will, can shorten in length and increase in length right here. So, for example, when you're about to give birth or close to push, the head, the cervix will shorten, um, the muscle will shorten there. Um, right here, this external orifice, it has a mucus plug, if that's the word. And that mucus plug, right in this opening, prevents bacteria from moving from the vagina up into the uterus. Um, the word here is muscles. I don't have that one down. So the uterus, there is muscles on the pelvic floor, like the pelvic diaphragm is one, and the urogenital diaphragm that hold the uterus and the vagina in place. You also have, um, these ligaments called round ligaments that extend laterally from the uterus and to help anchor and support the uterus. 
and then other ligaments that support, support the cervix. <clears throat> Just like um, any other parts of the body, with age, the muscles can essentially stretch, um, be less supportive. So that happens as women get older, so that can cause the uterus to lower. Um, the uterus, the, the layers, okay? So there's an outer layer called the parametrium of the uterus. The inner layer, <clears throat> remember that prefix myo means muscle. And so that's a very thick muscular layer in the uterus. It has to be thick because it has to generate a lot of force for um, contractions to push out a, a baby. And the innermost line is called the endometrium. The endometrium, every month, uh, you shed the innermost layer of it. That's known as the functional layer. And you begin building that during puberty. Most of the month you don't get pregnant, so if you don't get pregnant, no fertilization, that innermost layer of the endometrium is shed. That's the word at menses. The vagina is um, thick-walled and it's fibromuscular, so it can stretch, it's muscular, and um, tube is the word here. And the most inferior part, it functions as a birth canal. It functions um, to, that's where the penis goes in intercourse. And it also is the passageway during menstruation for the endometrium to leave. And this is the mid-sagittal view. We see the bladder, the uterus, the cervix, the vaginal canal. So we're going to talk about this area. The vagina itself has non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Now, if you remember back to the tissue chapter, stratified means many layers of cells, and squamous means uh, thin, so many layers of thin cells. They're not keratinized, so the skin isn't full of that hard keratin which is good. You don't want it to be keratinized down there. Highly vascularized in the vagina, which means good blood supply. And then the word here is acidic. The vagina is a very acidic environment. Um, and the reason why that it's acidic, it's to prevent infections. There's also many folds within the tissue itself to allow it to stretch. <clears throat> but where it leaves the body, and it's called the vaginal orifice, and there is like a, a thin vascularized, um, meaning blood um, barrier called the hymen that exists. But <clears throat> most of the time the hymen uh, gets destroyed usually by like using a, a tampon or something like that, that most women um, have used. So, but it does exist and, but it can even also be ripped the hymen like riding a bike or something like that. This is just the, the frontal view of the uterus, the ovaries, and all those things together. Great picture. Make sure you know all the parts, where they're located. So where does fertilization usually happen? You should be able to answer that. So you can pause and answer that. And what are the three tunics of the uterus from outer to inner? You should be able to answer that as well. Pause if you need to. Look back on your notes. Cervical cancer is a common cancer in women. And there are different risk factors. The most uh, important risk factor is called the human papillomavirus, or HPV. And it's caused by a virus. The cancer is caused by the virus. There is a vaccine available. It's called Gardasil that is available if you want. Um, also, uh, there is a technique done to help detect cervical cancer, and it's called a pap smear, P-A-P. <clears throat> and what happens is a... An uh, instrument called a speculum is inserted into the vaginal canal, and a swab is taken, like um, like you know how your throat is, your tonsils are swabbed for uh, strep throat. That swab is uh, used to swab the cervix and sent in to detect cancerous cells or non-cancerous cells. Cancer is detected. <clears throat> it, um, you can have treatment. Some sometimes part of the cervix needs to be removed possibly even a hysterectomy if bad enough. All right, so that is part one there.